Hello people, in this video we want to look at amoeba. Parasitology of amoeba we want to look at. Amoeba, these are actually uh, protozoans. Right? So they are unicellular. They are simple, uh, very simple protozoans. They, they have no fixed shape. Okay? So basically, look at the classification here. Uh, we have so many types of amoeba. So you come out of that uh, basic level where you think amoeba is amoeba. Here you have so many types of amoeba. You have amoeba which live in the intestine and amoeba which are free living. In the intestine you have some things which are uh, pathogenic and some things which are not pathogenic. This pathogenic one also, it can live in as commensal in minuta form. It is called as minuta form. And um, it is, uh, there is, if it is pathogenic, it is called as entamoeba histolytica. Okay. So main focus for us here is entamoeba histolytica. Other uh, pathogenic uh, uh, amoeba are going to be neg Neglaria fowleri, Acanth amoeba, then Balamuthia mandrillaris. Okay, at least this one you can know it is amoeba because then the name it is amoeba. Otherwise, if you are going with neg Neglaria fowleri, then you will think that it is something else. It is actually amoeba. Okay, though there is no amoeba word in this. Okay, so you should remember that. Now coming to the commensals which are not pathogenic. These are good, good people. They are not pathogenic. You should know Entamoeba coli. They will write it as E. coli. Don't get confused. It's Entamoeba coli. It's not the bacteria E. coli. Then you have Entamoeba hartmani, Entamoeba gingivalis. Gingivalis obviously not in the intestine, right? It will be somewhere in the mouth. Endolimax nana. Endolimax nana. And what is this guys? Aidoa, Ayo, Ayodamiba, Butchelli. Okay, so so many names and so many um, uh, entamoebas, but we are focusing only on entamoeba histolytica mainly. Everything else you can just know for now. Okay, now basically uh, this uh, entamoeba histolytica it is found in uh, human colon and it will usually be asymptomatic. Okay, but then uh, it can become pathogenic. And it will cause am amoebic dysentery, okay, or amoebic liver abscess also it can cause. That is the extra intestinal uh, amoebiasis. So it can affect the intestine and liver, etc. Okay. It is there worldwide, but not much in America, they are saying. Okay. Not much in America. So it causes what? Amoebic dysentery and amoebic liver abscess okay so this, this and all you should know you know what dysentery is right dysentery means basically blood in stools is called as dysentery okay if there is blood only you can call it as dysentery diarrhea which has blood is called as dysentery actually diarrhea is watery stools if the diarrhea has blood in it then it goes on to become a dysentery okay so, dysentery, they will ask you in the exam, they will ask you to differentiate between bacterial dysentery and amoebic dysentery. So, you should be able to differentiate. Okay, we will come to all that as of now. Now, let us look at the morphology. Morphology of uh, entamoeba histolytica. First of all, amoeba itself, right? Amoeba itself, what it will have? It will have, um, it's a protozoan, correct? So, it will have single cell. Here you can see that uh, the cytoplasm will be uh, is bounded by a membrane, okay? And uh, you will have uh, the cytoplasm has two parts. It will have an endoplasm and an ectoplasm. Guys, okay? pay attention here. The in this is the uh, endoplasm is inside and ectoplasm is outside. So endoplasm and ectoplasm together form the cytoplasm, okay? So there's a membrane dividing the cytoplasm into in ectoplasm and endoplasm. Then you have pseudopodia. See, you can see here pseudopodia. Pseudopodia is for the uh, movement, correct? So you know all this from uh, very basic uh, call classes itself. You know what, how the amoeba moves, pseudopodia. You know all that, right? So uh, it will thrust the ectoplasm outside, right? Ectoplasm, it will thrust outside to form the pseudopodia. This helps in locomotion also phagocytosis. That means to eat also it will help, right? So reproduction, how does an amoeba reproduce? By fission and by budding. So it will bud. And then it will, uh, there will be fission. So there will be uh, reproduction this way. 
cyst is uh, formed by unfavorable condition so if there is any unfavorable condition it will become a cyst so any unfavorable condition will uh, it will become a cyst something like this so this is a pre cyst then it will become a uninucleated binucleated and a quadrinucleated cyst so if there is a unfavorable condition it become a cyst so this is something you have to note here a bacteria will become a spore endospore and a uh, amoeba here they are saying it become a cyst okay the thing with the cyst is the cyst is actually the infective form so this quadrinucleated cyst right this is the infective form for us okay for vertebrate host this quadrinucleated cyst is actually going to be infective okay morphology just let's see what it is and we'll just make some points here otherwise we will forget okay hold on so it is a protozoa it has cytoplasm it is divided as ectoplasm and endoplasm pseudopodia comes from the ectoplasm it will help in locomotion and phagocytosis in unfavorable condition it will form a cyst the infective form is the quadrinucleate cyst one more thing we have to write is about the reproduction reproduction is from budding fission and budding fission means it will break into two right okay so now let's move on what else you should know this actually they have written here that it can cause death also okay a lot of deaths actually so it is very important to know entamoeba histolytica so the morphology if they ask in a very structured form how will will you write you have to draw this diagram and you have to explain that um, uh, this is the trophozoid this is the trophozoid this is the pre cyst and then these three are the cysts okay you have the uninucleate cyst binucleate cyst and quadrinucleate cyst the cyst again uh, the quadrinucleate cyst again can become this trophozoid okay in the life cycle you will see all that hold on we'll show you okay so basically trophozoite now trophozoite is a vegetative or a growing stage of the parasite that means it is not the dormant stage it's a vegetative stage it's a growing stage these and all will be the dormant stages kind of now this uh, uh, vegetative state of this parasite it is present in tissues in us in humans when it ever infects let's say it will become a trophozoite this is will open up and become a trophozoite it is irregular in shape okay it varies in size it is large it is actively motile and it is passed in the dysentric stool so if a person has dysentery in his stools this uh, uh, this can be there if he is infected right the parasite as it occurs free in the lumen as a commensal it is actually it can even occur as a commensal within us that's what we told you it is called as minuta form okay it's called as minuta form so basically what on all we saw now trophozoid there can be trophozoid there can be pleases and there can be cyst now trophozoite is basically the vegetative form okay it is the growing form it is in the tissues it is actively motile right and um, as a commensal if it is there it's called as a minuta form we already said that now coming to the trophozoite the more detail cytoplasm the outer ectoplasm is clear yeah that's what we have shown here the outer ectoplasm you can see it is clear it is transparent and refractile the inner endoplasm is finely granular that also you can see in this diagram it has a ground glass appearance okay okay it has fine granules so it has this ground glass appearance kind of transparent but has all these granules the endoplasm contains nucleus so what and all it contains the endoplasm let's zoom a little the endoplasm you can see here it contains a nucleus karyosome they have written it contains nucleus food vacuole you can see the food vacuole there's one more food vacuole here then you can see rbcs that's erythrocytes and occasionally you can see wbcs okay and some tissue debris can be found fine this is the description of the endoplasm now in the morphology they are explaining the pseudopodia the pseudopodia are finger like projections okay typical motility of the amoeba will be crawling or gliding movement then uh, nucleus how is the nucleus nucleus is spherical it contains a central karyosome and it is surrounded by a clear halo and it is anchored to the nuclear membrane by fine radiating fibrils called the linen network 
and it has a cartwheel appearance guys pay attention here it is very easy to notice whatever they are telling here everything you can see actually look at this it has a cartwheel appearance the nucleus right because peripherally it has um, peripherally it has chromatin granules okay so it has fine radiating fibrils central karyosome so it has cartwheel appearance okay then the nuclear membrane is lined by a rim of chromatin that we already told you trophozoite form acute uh, trophozoite will be there in stools we already told you that they can of they can eat off this erythrocytes these these are uh, protozoans they will feed on our blood so they have erythrocytes so this is one of the diagnostic as phagocytes red cells are not found in any other commensals of intestinal amoeba so you know it is pathogenic when it's picking up this rbc okay now what happens whenever there is unfavorable environment guys wake up if you are sleeping please wake up we are looking at we finish looking at the trophozoite right of entamoeba histolytica now we are moving on to this precyst so basically what happens and these will become a precyst why they will become a precyst whenever they are um, going to in the large intestine right so they will undergo encystment so usually they say it is because of uh, unfavorable environment that it becomes a uh, cyst right but anyways in the large intestine it becomes a cyst okay precyst then it becomes a un uninucleate binucleate and quadrinucleate cyst so just look at this so these have something like glycogen mass see you can see this glycogen mass so these have glycogen mass so they contain glycogen vacuole and two chromatid bodies see chromatid bars it has so they are talking about this it has chromatid bars okay so this is about the cyst how the cyst is forming the cyst is spherical in shape you can see that they are spherical in shape the early cyst contains single nucleus and two other structures that is a mass of glycogen and one to four chromatid bodies so that also you can see here a mass of glycogen and one to four chromatid bodies are going to be there so only one nucleus this is an initial cyst okay the chromatid bodies are so called because of their stain with hematoxylin like chromatin these chromatid bodies don't have chromatin they just stain like chromatin okay because uh, they stain like that with hematoxylin now as the cyst matures now the cyst is maturing guys as the cyst matures what will happen the glycogen mass in the chromatid bodies disappear and the nucleus undergoes successive mitotic divisions only the nucleus undergoes division and finally there are four nuclei okay and the other things are going to disappear the glycogen and the chromatid bodies are disappearing so this mature cyst the quadrinucleate cyst is actually called as mature cyst this is the mature cyst okay and this is the one that is infective to humans right to the vertebrates so the mature cyst is the quadrinucleate the cyst wall has high refractile membrane okay so the cyst wall is highly refractile it makes it resistant to gastric juices and it will it can sustain unfavorable environment that's the whole point right now what will happen it will come out in the stools and it will be there in the stools so it can survive outside the body our body is this all fine guys so you understood everything right so you'll have to draw this diagram and explain the morphology of entamoeba histolytica if they ask next we will move on to life cycle so life cycle is important uh, life cycle and pathogenesis only they will ask in the exam so to for life cycle also you have to draw all these cysts and encystations so you have to understand the morphology then moving on to the clinical features you should know about intestinal amoebiasis extra intestinal amoebiasis you should know everything you should know lab diagnosis also how to demonstrate the trophozoites and the cyst in the stool etc we will come to all these details then immunity how our body fights it and treatment for entamoeba histolytica uh, they are saying it is metronidazole or uh, tinidazole these are uh, we'll have to learn these we'll come to all the details so basically guys entamoeba histolytica is a very important topic so you should know what and all you know you should know the lab diagnosis pathogenesis morphology twice they have asked the morphology you should know the morphology you should know the lab diagnosis uh, in of intestinal amoebiasis you should know the complications of amoebiasis amoebic dysentery bacillary dysentery you should be able to tell the differences that also we should make a note here difference between 
basilary dysentery and amoebic dysentery all this they have asked in the exam you should know again uh, lab diagnosis for the intestinal for the extra intestinal you should know the lab diagnosis for each one very 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 important guys then about free living amoeba also they have asked uh, a few times they have asked about free living amoeba where is the free living amoeba these one night Nigleria fowleri, Nigleria fowleri. They have asked. Then they have asked about this free living amoeba. You have to mention this Nigleria flia fowleri, Acanth amoeba, Balam Balamuthia mandrillaris. Okay, at least know the names. If you can't write anything else, at least write the names. Okay. So you should know completely about amoeba. Looks like at least end amoeba histolytica. You should know every word. So do one thing, come back for the next video. Let's wind up this video. We saw the history, we saw the morphology. In the next video, we'll look at the life cycle of Entamoeba hysteritica. Okay. See you for now. Bye bye.